Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, yeah, just thought I'd get the camera rolling because uh, I've just had another pickup which arrived uh, yesterday actually, but I didn't, because of work, I didn't have a chance to uh, open it. Ripped the box open today. I was really looking forward to uh, receiving this. But uh, yeah, you might recognize this. Um, it's not the most common of systems. Uh, that's available and that you see videos of on YouTube, but it's the Vectrex. Now, um, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to pick the camera up, so it might be a little bit shaky. But yeah, as you can see, this is a console, and uh, if it will focus, Vectrex by MB. Now, uh, MB released this in, I do believe, the UK, Australia, maybe Europe. Um, and I remember MB, I think it's Milton Bradley, but uh, I remember them uh, for making all of the most of the board games when I was a child. I, I presume that that's the same MB, uh, MB Games. Um, but uh, yeah, it was released in America as well, in the US, I believe. But uh, that was released by um, or manufactured by a different company, uh, still the same system, same machine. And uh, this came out, I do believe, in 1982-1983, so I would have been about seven, eight years old. And, uh, yeah, I was only, um, only found out about this system, I think, uh, last year. Uh, I saw some videos on it, and I thought, what the hell is this? Because I never, ever saw one, never saw anyone or knew anyone that owned one. So, uh, yeah, I was really, really wanted to get one, but they can go for quite some money. But... Um, yeah, so anyway, let's have a closer look at the system. It comes with, um, it's just a normal, I suppose, CRT monitor. Um, but as you'll see when I show you the um, games running on it later, that this, uh, this runs quite, or works quite differently to other CRTs. And the fact that this isn't pixel graphics, it's um, smooth lines, it's like vector style graphics, I believe. But I'm no expert, so um, I can't really go into detail about that. But uh, yeah, let's have a look. So there we have the system, the console. Uh, there, if we, uh, yeah, we've got a little lever. You pull that out, and that's your actual control pad. So, uh, yeah, we'll put that down there. We'll have a little look at that. So, yes, it's uh, it's got uh, an analog control stick. It's got the four buttons. Um, and it's got this old style sort of telephone cord attaching it to the to the unit. There was no wireless controllers back then, guys. So uh, if we look here, uh, this is an on-off switch which also acts as a volume. Uh, this one has reset on it, uh, and you can surprisingly play uh, two-player games. So that's uh, second-player um, joypad, but these things go on or go on the auction sites for um, quite some money. Um, but there are options. I think a company's released uh, an adapter that plugs in there and you can just use Sega Mega Drive joypads, which I might actually do. Um, and there's a the speaker. So uh, we'll have a look around the side. And uh, there we can see, that's where the cartridge is slotting. I'll show you that in a second. Excuse the mess guys, uh, I'm still clearing or moving into uh, into this property. So I uh, only recently moved in. So still rejigging my game room stroke study. As you can see, um, this was listed for sale on Gumtree, uh, local to me here in Aust Perth, Australia. And uh, the guy that listed it said it was the Australian model, which it is. Uh, he said it's um, one owner since 1982. It was bought in 1982. And he was the owner. So uh, he decided to get rid of this. Uh, as you can see, Milton Bradley got the serial number and everything. Um, so, yeah, a little, little bit of dirt in there. A um, few little marks uh, on the top. 
But uh, that just adds to sort of the history of these little machines, in my opinion. Uh, I know some people are pretty anal about having marks and scratches. It's got to be mint. But to me, as long as it works, it's fine. I probably will clean the dirt and grime and stuff like that off of it. But um, excuse the mess, guys. But uh, yeah, that is the system. Uh, if we look down here, we can see that it came with six games. Now, there is a game built into the system. Uh, I think it's Mindstorm or something. We'll see that later. But um, yeah, the, the games come on these little... Um, uh, if I have it the right way. Uh, it says on their cassette tape. Uh, now, this is a cartridge, isn't it? It's got a PCB in there. Um, but yeah, this is Berserk. And uh, small little little cartridge. Uh, quite like it. I should have put these the right way round. Um, the next game we have here, if it will focus, is Cosmic Chasm. So that other game just now was Berserk. Is that Berserk? Yeah. So Cosmic Chasm. Uh, this game, uh, labels coming off a little bit, is Soccer Football. Gotta have a football game. Not sure how it will look on this system. And here we have um, Vectrex Solar Quest. So another game here. Flipper Pinball. Do like a good old pinball game. Not sure again how primitive and basic this game will look though. Uh, Scramble. And then uh, here you can probably see I've got these plastic overlays that go over the screen. Now, the purpose of these is because the Vectrex is a black and white screen released in 1982. Obviously, they, they had colour TV, I do believe, back then. But um, yeah, it's a black and white screen. And these um, specifically came with each game. So um, you can see what the different buttons do there. Uh, buttons one, two, three, and four. It says player one, player two at the top. But this offers a little bit of colour. So this changes the colour of the on-screen graphics specifically for each game. So um, yeah, there's the scramble, scramble one, cosmic chasm. So they're all unique to each game. So if you're thinking of picking up one of these systems and you just get the loose cartridges. Um, or cassettes as they're called on them um, then the chances are you're not going to get this overlay and uh, you can still play the game but um, as you can see these uh, these do differ in colours and, and everything else and um, yeah it's probably going to uh, affect your gameplay experience somewhat sweep so that's the overlays are uh, quite thick plastic I mean you can crease them they can get creased I I, um, I presume but um, yeah pretty pretty decent so here we have some manuals so uh, it's the hyper chase clean sweep we'll have a look through one of these in a minute starship soccer football scramble some of these manuals the, the games didn't come with them but he gave me the manuals anyway uh, we have the owner's manual so uh, let's have a look through the owner's manual good old manuals that uh, that i really miss in uh, today's modern era of gaming didn't come with the box unfortunately the original box Yeah, fantastic. And let's have a look through. We'll do this one. Have a look through there. Creasing my manuals up. Don't want to do that.
Okay, so you've got the different languages. So even back then in 1982, they still gave you different languages where this, uh, this machine obviously was sold in Europe as well. Australia, UK and Europe. So, uh, so that is just a brief look at the Vectrex. Uh, I do know that capturing gameplay from the screen on this uh, can be quite dodgy. Um, it's difficult to do it any justice by capturing, but I'm going to give it a good go. And um, we'll check out some gameplay on this awesome console that uh, I've just been itching to get my hands on. Okay guys, just turned it on. Not sure how well this is gonna capture. Uh, I haven't put the overlay on, so this is just the sort of black and white screen. Okay, it's going out of focus. Try to. Uh... That's it. It's going to go in and out of focus, but just to give you guys an idea, look how uh, look how clean and crisp those lines look. Uh, you can adjust the volume, so I'll do that now. Let's actually move the ship. Actually. Uh... Okay, so let's die. I've turned the sound down completely. It's like an asteroids type game. This this is the built-in game, incidentally, uh, Mindstorm. So you just shoot or try to shoot everything on the screen. Uh, you've got a score at the top left, which is a little bit blurry at the moment. Like I said, this is going to go in and out of. Very difficult to film this screen. Oh, I just love the sounds and everything on this game. Um, just hearing these old systems, I, I just love it. So you've got this thruster um, thing that can zoom you to other parts of the... Uh... Oh, got done then. Game over. So let's try to put on the overlay. So, um, see what difference that makes. So, as you can see, just clips, clips in. Is that in? Difficult to do this in the dark as well. <laughs> so, uh... Let's see, I believe that's in. So, let's see what difference that makes. Definitely got more colour now, more of a glow to it. Close. Should have moved really. Come on. Oh, die you alien bastards. Come on. Oh.
I just love this. I really, really, really love this game. I don't know whether it's just because I'm into retro gaming consoles. I love things, um, games and video consoles from the 90s, you know, the 80s. Oh, you've got a te like a teleport button there. I could come in. Oh, yeah. Oh, teleported straight into a an enemy. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's it's the whole nostalgia from this. I mean, um, I never had one of these systems growing up. Never even knew it existed until uh, last year. But uh, so happy to have this. So you've got the boost. You've got the uh, fast teleport. Hey, there we go. That was a bit better. You guys know that I've got the um, the Astro Wars. Oh no, I've got the old Astro Wars Grandstand Astro Wars um, tabletop uh, video game system. That I had from when I was a child. I did a video on that. If you haven't checked out that video, please uh, find that in my channel and give it a watch. But uh, yeah, that's like a Galaxians type game and uh, very similar sort of style to this, although the graphics on this are, and sounds are far better. Oh, you bastard! Um, but I love these little things and the fact that this system came with its own. Uh, came with its own uh, screen uh, it's got like a carry hand also you could carry it around so to a certain extent it was portable um, you've got the controller that tucks away in nicely in it um, I think the, the overall design um, it's not over heavy it's got some weight to it you wouldn't want to be carrying it carrying it around with you but um, the overall design is really really good uh, it's like a buzzer humming which you can hear. Now I have, it is noticeable, um, but that was part and parcel of all of these systems. And um, there are some modern day fixes to that. Uh, people have released, certain, you can make certain modifications to this and that will get rid of or reduce um, the uh, humming and the buzzing. Now I'm not sure that I would actually do that for me you know, this, that's how this system was designed and I'd like to keep it intact. Um, the problem with getting these old systems, old arcade boards and things of that nature that I do collect is you can experience problems with them over time. You know, nothing lasts forever, unfortunately. And uh, this system came out, it was released in, in, the, in the 1980s, so it's many, many, many years old. And, uh, you know, you are going to have problems with it. But uh, this has had the one owner, if I believe what was what the guy said who was selling it to me. It seemed quite genuine. So um, it's been in storage, he said, for the last 20 years. So uh, we will see. Uh, I'm sure there's people skilled enough out there that can repair these things. Uh, I'm not one of those people. But... Um, yeah, the other games that came with it, I'm going to try one in a minute. He did say that they don't work, but I need to purchase some uh, some replacement chips or something for them. You can get a bundle of looks on eBay 50 for um, relatively cheap. Uh, when I say relatively cheap, about a dollar each or something, but you've got to buy them. You can't buy them in any less than the 50. Um, so uh, I think you might be able to buy them in 20s for slightly cheaper but uh yeah so i need to buy those and then it's just a simple case of um unscrewing the uh the cartridges and replacing those because he said that they don't play at the moment so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to test uh, a couple of these so uh, let's turn that off let's try the pinball game so i'm gonna slot this into this little cartridge slot 
slots in nice and easy. Okay, so the Victrix comes up. Victrix uh, sign. And Mindstorm, the built-in game, comes on. So I take it that uh, that hasn't registered. I've got no other cartridges that I can check, so I am hoping that the cartridge slot does actually work on this um, on this system. But I will get those replacement uh, PCB chips pretty quickly. Uh, I think it's a common fault with these. Yeah, as you can see, that's the second one I've tried and it's not working. And I am presuming that uh, you just plug in the cartridge and it should it should pick it up. Uh, let's try one more. And this is Berserk. So let's uh, hit the reset button. Reset button just brings it back to that. Honestly guys, the video that I'm capturing here doesn't do this game any justice whatsoever. You can really go rapid fire with that. This is where you could do with one of the um, turbo fire pads uh, I have for the Neo Geo. I think in future, guys, I'm going to try and look at a better way of recording the. Uh, the gameplay footage from this because I do want to feature this more on my channel is kind of blurry at the moment it goes in and out of focus I'm capturing this with my uh, with my phone camera the joystick though is really really accurate and sort of sensitive to uh, to actually moving it moves yeah moves really really um, really accurately oh no should have why didn't I warp I panicked oh this is fantastic honestly guys I am super excited to have this and I've just got a big grin on my face at the moment uh, in fact I pick up loads of Neo Geo games, you know, MVS, uh, an AES game here and there, picked up one recently, I've shown in my recent pickups video, I pick up PC Engine games, you know, arcade PCBs, but, um, oh, that was fast, but uh, I don't think I've ever been as excited as getting this system, which shouldn't be the case, because look how basic and graphics, the um, graphics, basic and... Uh, and simple the graphics and the sounds are but uh, sometimes that's all you, all that you need it really is you know there's it's just lines isn't it it's lines and dots and uh, there's no color between those most of those lines but there, there's just something appealing about it okay guys i'm going to end there i could play this all day long and film hours and hours and hours of this of me just dying on the second level time and time again but uh, i will feature more videos on this um it's great in my opinion uh, i think that i've been told and from what i've read that emulation isn't 100 percent on these games um on vectrex for some peculiar reason just because of the style of graphics that it actually uses and uh the footage that I've captured here doesn't do it any justice. What I'm seeing through uh, with my own eyes, um, you know, outputting from the screen, is just is just unbelievable for a system that was released at that time. In my opinion, the game games <laughs> the game this game, which is the only one I can play at the moment, is really enjoyable. I'm just absolutely loving it, and um, 
really glad that I picked this up to be honest with you it did cost me quite a bit of money I came to an agreement with the seller so this cost me I do believe it was around 500 Australian dollars so um, yeah it's uh, it, it's not cheap uh, but I've seen them go for a lot more than that as well if you get the chance and, and you're into these things and you get the opportunity to pick one up I really seriously recommend it okay guys cheers for watching and I will see you in another video. Cheers guys, bye.